Hey guys, my name is Alex, and in this video we're going to take a closer look at nested routes. But before we do that, the very first thing I'd like to do is I'll create an index.js file inside of errors, and this will help us to import not found from 404. And what I'll do is I'll do a named export of not found, like that. And then we can go back to app.js, and instead of referencing the 404 file directly, I could just remove the 404 postfix and just simply have a named import of not found. So I'll save that. And I think we also have one import over here inside of writers. So I'll do the same thing. And this will help us to slightly simplify the import path. I'll put it at the top, the same thing for this one. So now having done that, I'd like to move on to nested routes. Like I said, if I were to go to our server, it houses a database. We already have a list of writers. And at this point, we don't really have any nested resources. What I'd like to do though, is I'd like to go back to the store and I'd like to add a list of books. So basically every writer would have a book and we're gonna see how we can connect those books with the associated writers. All right, so I went ahead and pasted a list of books. What I basically did here is I added a key known as text. And this text is basically an array of objects in which every object basically represents a book. Now, a book will typically have an ID that uniquely identifies that book. It also have a writer ID that's basically a pointer to the writer who supposedly wrote the book. Now, we also have the title, the description, as well as the year when the book was published. And I went ahead and created a dozen or a bunch of them. So I'm going to save the file. Let's go back to the server and let's try to see the list of texts. The reason I called them texts instead of books is because some of these publications are actually essays. So a generic name as text I think is quite appropriate here. So as you can see here we get a list of texts or publications for every writer. Now of course that in and of itself is not very useful because we'd like to be able to associate every text with the appropriate writer. So if we were to type out the writers, what JSON server provides us with is a special argument or a query parameter known as embed. And if I add that embed argument and notice the underscore that you have to use as a prefix. And if I made that equal to text, when I make the request, as you can see here, we get a list of texts along with all of the other information like name, description, and image. So this is useful if you want to fetch the list of all of the writers as well as the text that they have produced. And if you're curious about some of the options that are available in JSON server, you could always check out the documentation and the embed property that I was referring to. You could simply search for it in GitHub on the, in the readme page. As you can see here, the embed property basically allows you to reference the relationships that exist between different entities. And like I said, in order to create the relationship, I had to add this writer ID. And the writer ID, like I said, basically references the writer by their ID. So for instance, in this specific scenario, this book object or this text references Osho. And as you probably know, Osho is the ID of the writer that we have over here. So there is a match between the writer's ID and the writer ID property that is available in every text or every book. So with this in place, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go back to app.js, our app component. And what I'll do is I'll add a, an embed parameter to the URL so that we're gonna be able to also fetch the list of texts along with the writers. And just to clarify, like I said before, if you wanted to just fetch the list of writers without the relationship, you would do something like slash writers. But like I said, if you wanted to embed the text, of course, you just simply include the embed property, add the name of the relationship, and this key basically refers to the text that we have defined in this file, and this is the key for the books that we have created. Okay, so I'll go back to app.js and I'm going to save the file. And if I go back to the app, as you can see here, we have a request to writers with the embed property. And in the preview, you can already see that we get a list of writers and they all have the text property that contains the list of books that are associated with those writers. So I'm going to go back to the editor and close off these files. What I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to create a new folder inside of writer. I'll call it text. And for the text, let's also create index.js and this would be 
our component for the text or the book or the publication, whatever you want to call it. What we're going to do here is going to look through the text that belong to the writer. So we can have a map function. We'll have a text and what we're going to do is we're going to have a list item. And that's why I'm going to have to add an unordered list as well. So let's do exactly that and let's also move this guy inside. So I'm going to fix the indentation over here. And then inside of the ELI element, and of course, when it comes to text, we also have to destructure them from the writer. This would be just another property, just like image or description. And then inside, what I'll do is I'll have a link. And this one would have to be imported from React Router DOM. So let's do exactly that and name the import for a link from React Router DOM. And let's also have a two property. So this one would have the URL, URL, let's see. And then the other thing we need to add is slash text and then slash the ID of the text. And then in this scenario, I'll have to destructure the ID of the text object. So this would be an ID and also the title, of course. And this is not a self-enclosing element or tag this is actually just a normal tag and we're gonna have to also put in the title of the book and this way we're gonna have a list of titles of the books that this writer has written and the other thing is of course we're gonna need to also include the URL which we'll have to provide through the properties and this will not actually work so if I were to go to a writer you're gonna see that we get an error cannot read property URL of undefined that's because we're not matching, we're not passing the match property from the writer's component. So the problem happens over here. In fact, we're going to have to pass all of the default properties that we receive on this argument. So this one I'm going to change to props. And we used to destructure match from those props. What I'll simply do is I'll just reference it off the props variable that we're going to have as the only single argument over here. And this will allow us to destructure the properties that are going to have the history, the match, as well as the location that are provided by React Router DOM. And then when we pass them down, we're going to have the URL property available on the match. And this will allow us to have a link over here. So having all of those files saved, as you can see here, we get a list of books. And let's see, the very first one, the URL is text slash self-reliance. Self-Reliance is an essay written by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And just to clarify, when I search for Self-Reliance, there we go. That's the book. That's the book that the ID refers to. So what I'll do next is I'll go back to this file and then I'm going to also include a route. So for this route, what I'd like to do is I'd like to, well, first of all, the path, of course. The path would be the URL. Right? So we need to reference the current URL. And by the way, this URL for this specific component would be something like slash writers slash writer ID. So we can reference that and we can simply add slash text. This will reference the books or the publications. And then finally, this would be a text ID. So this would be a dynamic argument. And then lastly, I'll also provide a render um, property, right? And in there, I'm also going to have a callback function. The reason I'd like to provide a function inside of the render prop instead of using the component prop is because of the same exact problem that we used to have for writers. We, if you remember in the last video, we had to add a function that had to find the writer inside of the list of writers, but also verify that we were actually able to find that writer in the array, because if we were not able to do that, we're going to have to show the not found component, which is just simply a, an H3 tag that shows you, well, not found message. So we're going to do the exact same thing over here. So what I'll do is let's have a constant of text and we're going to try to find the text inside of text. Now a text object and we'll see if that text object ID equals the props match params text ID. In fact, we can further simplify this by destructuring the text object. So I'll grab the ID and I'll remove the uh, text object from there. And then what I'll do is 
we're gonna have a condition that says if we have not found the text, what we're gonna do is we're just going to return not found. What we're gonna have to do here, of course, is we're gonna have to import not found. Let's see, the path would be something like this. Let's go up two levels and then errors. And this should reference the 404.js file like that. And then finally, let's also import the route component itself because we have a reference for route over there. And finally, let's also return the text component that we're just about to create. What this is going to do is it's also going to spread out the text object. It'll basically provide all the properties like title, description, writer ID, all that good stuff. So what we also need to do, of course, is we need to import text from text and this would reference the index.js file over here so what we would need to do is we would need to import react from react and let's create a component that receives some props we're going to return a fragment for now let's also grab the title description as well as the publish date called the property published. What I'll do is I'll create an H4 tag, let's say, and inside I'm gonna paste in the title. And let's also have the publish date. So I'll have the published. And then finally, let's also have a paragraph with the description, description like that. Let's see if we have any errors. So back in the browser, fragment is not defined. We also need to import that. So let's have our fragment. Any other errors? Well, we get the self-reliance text. I'm gonna remove that from the URL. So now we just have the writer themselves. And then I'll click on, let's say, nature from the list. And as you can see here, we get the title with the date, but we also need to update that a little bit. So what I'll do is actually bring this on the same line. I'll just add the parentheses around it, around the date. So this is gonna look a little bit better that. So now we can basically navigate between the different writers. So I can go to Friedrich Nietzsche, let's see, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. So you can see the title, you can see the published date, and you can also see the description. Now, as far as the books go, some of the books will not have the description. So what we can do here is we can actually have a ternary expression. We're going to check if we do have the description. And if that's the case, we're going to return it. But as an alternative, Let's just simply return an i tag. What I'll do is, we could simply just put in no description, something like that. We could save that. And that's what we get. I'm actually gonna capitalize description like that. So that's what it's gonna look like. And then we can switch between the books. And of course, the title, description, and the published date are gonna be updated. Now, the interesting thing about the books, though, is what if I try to type out something that's an invalid book ID? So let's try something bogus. And as you can see here, we get a not found message. And the reason we get that is because of the not found component over here. It's because of the if check that we included. And this is the exact same check that we also have for the writer. And in fact, what I'm just going to do here very quickly is I'll destructure the ID of the writer, and we can just simply have a check against the ID directly, just like that. One issue, though, is that some books will not have a publish date. So, for example, this book, we can actually check its title. Let's go back to the store and let's see what's going on. Here's our store JSON file. And this is the object that we are destructuring and working with. So, for whatever reason, it doesn't have a publish date. Now, going back to our index.js file for the text component, what we can do here is we can actually have a check. So what we can do is let's have a check for the publish property. If we do have a publish property, what I'm going to do is I'll wrap the title with the parentheses and I'll have the publish date inside. Otherwise, we can just simply return an empty string like that. So I'll save the file and I'm going back to the browser. In this case, we have a book title that doesn't have a published date. And this one does have one. So let's actually inspect the element. We have the title and the published date. But let's say if I select one that doesn't have a published date, 
unexpected title and we just get a, an empty string at the end. So that's gonna solve the problem with the publish date. Now I think this is good enough for now and of course we can continue adding more features eventually and we're gonna explore some of the other functionalities that are available inside of React Router DOM. But for the very next video, we're actually going to pull in Machil UI. So what I'll do is I'll add Machil UI as a dependency and we're gonna use some of the Machil UI components in order to beautify the application. So we've got a lot of work to do and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.